Howard Hughes, billionaire pilot and movie maker, and the founder of one of the world's leading helicopter manufacturers. A brilliant man who loved airplanes and set out to make aeronautical history. His first creation, the revolutionary H-1 racer, set new speed records during the 1930s. In 1938, Howard Hughes flew a twin-engine Lockheed Electra around the world in the record-setting time of 91 hours. Pursuing a dream of both flying and manufacturing airplanes, Hughes developed the D-2, which he hoped to sell to the military. Unsuccessful with the D-2, Hughes developed perhaps his best-known airplane, the HK-1 Hercules Flying Boat, also known to the world as the Spruce Goose. The world's largest airplane for many years, the Flying Boat earned Hughes a place in aeronautical history. Making use of the technology developed for the D-2, Hughes succeeded in getting a military contract for the XF-11 reconnaissance plane. With Hughes at the controls for its first flight in 1946, the plane crashed due to a propeller malfunction, almost killing the famous industrialist. Following a miraculous recovery from his injuries, Hughes flew an uneventful maiden flight of the remaining XF-11 prototype, following major modification of the earlier ill-fated propeller system. Also in 1947, Hughes was subpoenaed to appear before Congress to justify why he spent millions of taxpayer dollars on the flying boat and the XF-11. Victim of a political vendetta, Hughes walked away from the hearings as a hero to the American people. Having never flown at the time of the hearings, Hughes took the flying boat up for its maiden flight on November 2, 1947, silencing many of the critics who said it would never fly. During the late 1940s, Howard Hughes devoted most of his resources to develop radar and missiles rather than airplanes, but he was always searching for a new aircraft project. In 1949, Hughes became involved in an intriguing project to develop the world's largest helicopter. Although his interest was airplanes rather than helicopters, Hughes did foresee his future in manufacturing whirlybirds. And what a whirlybird this was! Nicknamed the Beast by its test pilot, everything about the X817 was big, including its six foot wide rotor blades. From building the world's largest airplane to now the world's largest helicopter, Howard Hughes was continuing to think big. During its many test flights, the X817 even lifted a four ton Army communications trailer. The helicopter stood so high off the ground, it was a hike for the test pilots to climb up into the cockpit. In front of dozens of reporters and cameramen, the X-817 made its first public flight in October 1952, with Howard Hughes watching every detail. Hughes had an even larger flying crane helicopter on the drawing board, called the X-H-28. It never got beyond the wooden mock-up stage due to military cutbacks. By the mid-1950s, Hughes' sprawling Culver City, California plant was home to thousands of employees working on defense electronics, missiles, and a surprising new kind of helicopter. Hughes had gone from developing the largest helicopter to one of the smallest, called the Model 269. By 1960, Hughes was in full production of the small two- and later three-seat helicopter. In the mid-1960s, Hughes developed and produced the OH-6A light observation helicopter for the U.S. Army. Widely used during the Vietnam War, it assured Hughes a place as a major aircraft manufacturer. The OH-6A became famous when it set 23 world records, including a non-stop, unrefueled flight from California to Florida with test pilot Bob Ferry alone at the controls. The OH-6A's greatest accolades were earned over the skies of Vietnam, where almost 1,500 of the sturdy birds were used as Army scout helicopters. In 1972, the Army wanted a new attack helicopter. Hughes responded and was selected, along with Bell Helicopter Company, to produce prototypes for flight evaluation. On September 30, 1976, the Hughes YA-864, later called the Apache, made its first flight. In spite of the 
spite of all these accomplishments, the Apache program was beset with a number of technical and contractual problems. Following Howard Hughes' death, his close friend and iconic aviation figure Jack Reel took over the helm at Hughes Helicopters Incorporated to tackle those issues. In addition to Congress complaining about cost growth of the helicopter, the Army complained about an aspect of its flying characteristics. Jack Reel ordered that the original T-tail on the prototype be replaced with a more conventional tail, solving the piloting issue. From its first delivery to the present, the AH-64 Apache attack helicopter has become a household name, serving the U.S. Army and a host of other military services around the world. In 1984, used helicopters were sold to McDonnell Douglas Corporation. By the mid-1990s, all operations were moved to an expansive new facility in Mesa, Arizona. The old Culver City plant, where Howard Hughes started his aeronautical empire, became a ghost town. The world's longest privately owned runway was now covered with weeds and overlooking the vacant buildings that saw the birth of the XF-11, the flying boat, the 086A, and the Apache Advanced Attack Helicopter. The old Culver City site has been redeveloped. Condos, schools, parks, and modern office buildings form the core of a new community called Playa Vista. To the developer's credit, a number of the historic used buildings have been saved and now serve a new generation of internet-based businesses. You would think that Howard Hughes' accomplishments in owning a movie studio, vast real estate, Transworld Airlines, a defense electronics manufacturer, and most of the hotels in Las Vegas would be a good enough legacy for any man, but not for Howard. In his own words, he said, I want to be remembered for only one thing, my contribution to aviation.